Welcome to the next lecture in the series Bridges to the Future. Today we will discuss bridge management systems. We know that unfortunately bridge disasters still happen and they are always very spectacular and often very tragic. Sometimes we looked at the news on real collapsing bridge somewhere, I don't know, let's say Italy or in the USA. This is no longer different from the hundreds of bridge disasters and fed by Hollywood filmmakers. The only difference that on real that real people die on real bridges. And broken bridges always result in paralysis of transport in large areas of the country. However, the cost of such an event can uh, reach up to hundreds of millions of euros. That's why uh, all developed countries of the world maintain and develop so-called uh, bridge management systems, in short BMS, which in practice are implemented by road and rail administrations at various levels from central, like in Poland, Generalna Dyrekcja Dróg Krajowych i Autostrad, or local, like provinces and counties. So today's lecture will be about the problem of bridge management. We will start showing some recent bridge disasters that you may have seen on the news or the internet. Um, it, it was the major catastrophes of the mid 20th century that became the pretext for developing a systematic uh, approach to, to bridge management. So we'll present a history of these type of systems, which are called bridge management systems, in short BMS. Uh, we will discuss a little bit uh, about the value of bridges, price of bridge, uh, in their life cycle, of course. Uh, next, we will define uh, BMS systems, and I will show you uh, its main tasks and components. The most critical, of course, our element. Uh, uh, the most critical element is uh, undoubtedly the regular field inspection of bridges. Now, finally, I will present uh, some examples of BMS computer applications and the future of these systems, uh, particularly with the application of beam technology. Perhaps some of you remember a very serious catastrophe on the A10 highway near Genoa in Italy. It was built in 1967. It was a monumental bridge of great Italian designer Morandi, uh, which is considered by many to be the creator of the first uh, cable state bridges. Uh, meanwhile, after 50 years, during a summer storm in August uh, 2018, uh, two spans collapsed several tens of meters down, taking 30 vehicles with them that were just on the bridge. 43 people were killed and 145 were injured. There are many analyses of the causes and scenarios of this disaster. But unfortunately, the Italian administration has nothing to brag about here. Neglect in the management of Italian bridges contributed to severe many bridge disasters in this country, which were built mainly during the socialist rule in the 50s and 60s of 20th century. Today, a new bridge is constructed here in Genoa, built just in one year. Near us, not far away, in Prague in 1984, a unique ribbon bridge made of pre-stressed concrete with a span of 90 meters was built. Uh, the concrete platform, the concrete deck, was only 20-30 cm thick, which in these photos from the test load, load test makes a, makes a huge impression when a dozen trucks are standing on such a flabby bay. Uh, but this is the idea of uh, ribbon structures. Unfortunately, the lack of proper corrosion protection of, uh, for tendons and effective inspections caused that on Saturday morning, uh, December the, the 2nd in 2017, uh, the bridge span suddenly fell uh, to the Vltava River. Uh, fortunately, only two people were injured because it was uh, very, early, very early in the morning. 
but you must know that the footbridge led to the Prague Zoo. So, uh, and it, 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 if it were a different hour time of a year, it would have ended completely differently. However, in uh, 27, uh, in the Minneapolis, in just a few seconds, and only during the morning summit, the entire steel span with cars fell into the Mississippi River. 13 people were killed and 145 were injured. The USI again, uh, but in 1983. A steel span with a 30 meter span of the Manus River Bridge fell into the river along with their vehicles. Three people were killed and the reason was again corrosion and steel fatigue. Unfortunately, there was also no proper inspection of the technical condition. Another case from the USA, uh, this time Mount Vernon Bridge, which collapsed in 2013. I'd like not to be uh, to be smart, but uh, but here, but look at this large vegetation uh, around the bearing on the pillar. This shows that the bridge was was neglected. And here's the registered disaster of the arch bridge in Taiwan. The track no longer managed to reach the second apartment when one of the middle uh, suspension cable broke. The bridge was used for less than 10 years and the entire event took place in October 2019. The reasons are not yet known, but there was also information that a few days earlier a severe monsoon passed through Taiwan that could have damaged abutments. Let's take a moment to look at the effects of, of, of this disaster. Tao gắng chém nhiều. The truck driver survived despite the falling tanker catching fire, and the rest of the wounded were fishermen and boats just under the bridge. Uh, Let's go back uh, uh, a lot, uh, however, until 1967, when one of the most severe bridge disasters in the USA occurred. It was a chain like a silver bridge that collapsed because of, of iron node defects. The cast iron eye suddenly breaks uh, and the pin extends from it. Next is just the chain reaction and the whole span falls into the water. Everything happened during the morning summit, as usual, and 46 people were killed. However, this disaster had very serious consequences for the entire bridge world. Well, as, as a result of this tragic event, the U.S. Congress issued the Federal Highway Act, which established the National Bridge Inventory and the National Bridge Inspection Standard. Under these regulations, all bridges in the U.S. Um, with a span of more than six meters must be inspected. Minimum qualifications for bridge inspectors have also been established. Uh, it has been indicated which bridges should be inspected and how often information has to be collected and recorded during inspections. Frequency and the types of inspections have been established. One can actually say that NBIS has become uh, the first and to, to this day one of the best bridge management systems in the world. In the following decades, similar regulations were introduced in other developed countries. Have you ever wondered how much one typical bridge costs? Uh, what is the total value of our bridges? Well, in Poland we currently have over 35,000 bridges, of which over 7,000 is on the national roads. Such a statistical bridge is about 50 meters long, 
with 700 square meters area. Because the unit cost of bridge uh, construction is about 1,500 euro per square meter, the value of national bridges is over 7 billion euro. And the total amount of all Polish bridges may be several times higher. Meanwhile, Poland's budget in 2015 was around 77 billion euro. We must also know that the National Road Administration spends um, 53 million euro annually on the maintaining bridges. And the needs for all bridges in Poland can reach as much as 200 million euro. It's even hard to imagine so big money. In Europe and the world, uh, these are even more significant amounts. It's enough to realize that there are over 600,000 uh, of bridges in the US. Therefore, for each country, bridge resources um, assets constitute a substantial share in the national wealth. Thus, bridges management is an entirely different issue than building management. Uh, even if it was uh, part of the largest network of superior hotels or gas stations. And, and we are still constructing new bridges, tunnels, roads and railways. In this way, uh, our road and rail network is expanding, of course, uh, with thousands of bridges. Thus, the number of resources, of assets that are needed to manage increases. Uh, with the continuous reduction of public funds for maintenance, we are forced to extend the life cycle of individual bridges. And at the same time, you need to maintain and improve their security, their safety. There must be no tragic catastrophes uh, from which we began today's lecture. In every country uh, in the world, transport is necessary for the proper functioning of the economy, which is um, why our infrastructure is continuously, co continuously growing and new bridges are created every year. To protect taxpayers' investments and public expenditure, better and more proactive resource management, for example, infrastructure is needed. Administration should therefore be able to answer such questions. What assets do we have and where are they? What conditions are they in? Um, how much money do we have to spend to maintain or improve the current state? What will be the status after spending a given level of funds? The starting point in this case are two more questions. What is the current value of our bridges? And what is the amortized cost of these assets? And it is difficult because there are no assets for sale. Bridges are not for sale. Well, who would like to, to buy the Brooklyn Bridge? The road network is the most expensive element of in transport infrastructure, considering roads, bridges, railways, ports, and airports. Uh, for example, in the US, uh, it is managed by the Department of Transport. Uh, the Federal Highway Administration consumes um, almost 60% of, of US DOT budget. Uh, bridges are considered necessary connectors uh, on the road network. Total or partial damage of these connectors uh, paralyzes uh, the entire road network and causes significant losses of public and private funds. The costs of building, maintaining and replacing bridges are very high. Extending their life is one of the methods uh, to reduce these costs. Several studies are carried out in all developed countries. For example, the long-term bridge performance program uh, of long-term bridge uh, use is, is, is the U in the USA. It aims to collect data from a representative sample of bridges. Data is collected through regular inspections, assessments, monitoring, and even reports on the demolition and decommissioning of facilities. 
this will allow you uh, this will allow us to better understand the process of corrosion damage fatigue weather and varying loads this program will last for 20 years the reports are indeed to, to give high quality bridge usage data uh, that will help improve design damage and cost models and bridge management systems in future uh, let's look now uh, at the statistical bridge on uh, our national roads and highways in Poland. Uh, in 2015 there were already over 7,000 bridges. Of these 86% were concrete bridges and almost half of them were pre-stressed concrete bridges. The land of the medium uh, bridge is nearly 56 meters and the area is uh, 70 over 70, 700 square meters and the width about 50 meters. Uh, this chart shows uh, how the number of bridges on national roads had increased since uh, 2005 uh, when the express road and motorway construction program was started. We built over 3,000 new bridges at that time and this number is still growing and does not take into account roads and lower levels of administration. Uh, and, and, and railway bridges too. The average, the average age uh, of bridges in all developed countries is between 40 and 50 years old. Uh, uh, this is the time of, uh, ninth of 60s and 70s, 20th century, when the motoring of Europe followed. In the USA it was even 20 years earlier. That, that's why um, every year more and more funds are spent on maintaining bridges and replacing them, especially since the loads are increasing, both regular and real. The intensity of traffic on, on our roads is also increasing. A completely different uh, indicator in, in this case uh, looks in our country, which is catching up uh, with 50 years of socialism and dependence on Soviet Russia. For example, in 2008, the average age of bridges was just 13 years, and in 2015, only 8 years. Considering the still unfinished motorways and expressways, and plans to build 100 bypasses of Polish cities or strategic bridges on the most significant rivers, it can be assumed that by 2025, this indicator will continue to improve. Still, then, we will start spending more on maintenance, repair and replacement of bridges. And, and thus, uh, we came to the problem of bridge infrastructure management and so-called bridge management systems, in short, um, SGM. Uh, it is a tool, or rather, a way of managing bridge objects and does not necessarily mean uh, just a computer program. This is a a much broader concept uh, and the design construction use and maintenance stages of bridges SGM helps um, a road and rail administration meet their goals such as skipping inventory and inspections planning maintenance repair and replacement works everything uh, should be done regularly optimizing the allocation of financial resources and maintaining user security The main elements of this system uh, include bridge inventory in the form of a big database, technical assessment uh, carried out by regular inspections, deterioration and cost models, uh, models and functions to improve the technical condition of bridges, uh, for example repairs and rehabilitation, and, and finally, the, the decision tools with optimization and life cycle analysis. We will now discuss the main element of SGM system. Uh, in the beginning, it will be a, a register of bridges. Uh, it is the center of gravity uh, of, of the entire system. It is actually a, a knowledge base obtained from a regular inspections and maintenance activities. Uh, the integrity of, of SGM is directly related to the quality and uh, accuracy of records 
and to data on the technical conditions of objects acquired during the inspections. Um, the, the database contains information such as the identifier of, uh, uh, identifier of the bridge, its location and history of uh, construction and maintenance. The starting point uh, is project is, is design documentation, inspection results and description of activities. The knowledge base always decision makers to, to, to be well informed about bridge structures they manage and about the data needed to make uh, maintenance and repair decisions. Here we have an example of data visualization from the register of bridges from the American National Database. Each bridge in the database is described in detail and has many records also in the form of multimedia. Uh, on the maps you can present the location of, of the objects and compare the current technical condition. Each object has a card with graphic detail. Uh, this one is uh, from the Polish system. And the second essential element is also the object's uh, book. Um, on this basis, you can uh, conduct various analyses and prepare statistics and reports. Uh, different countries has developed, uh, have developed uh, different evaluation methods. The most popular rating for bridge condition was developed uh, in the USA. Uh, subjective grades range from 0 to 9, uh, with uh, 0 telling us that it's, it's very bad and 9 telling us it's, it's very good. In Poland we have uh, grades similar to school grades on, on a scale uh, of 0 to 5. Uh, the assessment of, of the technical condition can be given in the form of a co comprehensive evaluation of the bridge. The assessment applies um, to the entire facility. It can also be an, an individual assessment of bridge elements, which is separated in items such as uh, uh, girder, pillar, um, uh, abutment, foundations, pavement, barriers, etc. Uh, here's an example of, of bridge inspection with an assess uh, assessment of its compo components and, and the registration of, of found damages, identified damages. Uh, let's look, uh, for example, uh, uh, not recorded damage of, of the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, let's summarize the main tasks of, of SGM system. Uh, it is collecting inventory data on resources in the form of bridges. These are regular field inspections uh, with an assessment of the technical condition and load-bearing capacity. These are referred to as repair strengthening or replacement of objects. And finally, uh, the priorities for allocating funds for maintenance activities taking into account the reduction and reasonable use. Here we have an example from the USA again, um, showing components of, of SGM system with models of degradation, condition improvement and costs. There are also life cycle analysis modules with optimization and decision algorithms. Contemporary SGM systems are beginning to change. Uh, the SHM monitoring system, uh, technical condition monitoring system and, and beam methodology, me me methodology are, are already adapted. Cloud solutions and big data. All this means that SGM systems will soon become a very complex cyber infrastructural systems. Uh, infrastructure management means maximizing the benefits for so society. Uh, systematic and appropriate procedures and practices are needed to ensure optimal intervention strategies. A vast amounts of, of data are supported even with medium-sized road networks. Uh, the number uh, of objects is continuously increasing and they are becoming more and more complex. Uh, therefore, the decision-making process must be supported by advanced computer systems. Such uh, modern SGM applications uh, should contain at least the degradation and cost model, 
business principles regarding the methods of, of maintenance and costs, analytical uh, methods for calculating and presenting information relevant to, to the decision made. Here's a list of computer programs used in the world to support bridge management. Among them are also published applications uh, such as SGM, SMOG and uh, SHOCK, uh, which however are not keeping p p pace uh, with the development of information technologies. One of the world's most popular programs is the American Ponties, uh, which has also been adopted in several countries outside the USA. Here we have the Bentley Systems uh, program interface called InspecTech, uh, which is compliant with the American AASHTO standard uh, for bridge management. Uh, the SMOG program, Polish program uh, for managing railway bridges, was an up and coming system. Unfortunately, uh, mm, Railway Administration probably did not invest in the development of this program and is no longer appropriately used. Here we, here we can see the windows from the module of records and assessment of the technical conditions with visualization and, and uh, of the damages. Uh, the program um, allows uh, visualization of, of data, uh, for example, in the form of list of objects, uh, depending on their age and uh, our type of structure. The great hope for the development and improvement of SGM system systems is, is associated uh, with their integration with BIM models. The UK government defines BIM as a collaborative way of working supported by digital technologies that enable more efficient ways to design, create and maintain resources. Other experts define BIM as a set of interactive principles, processes and techniques uh, that create a methodology for managing key construction projects and project data in the digital form uh, throughout the building, let's say, in this case, bridge life cycle. BIM and SGM integration can be a response to the needs of SGM, of bridge management. More considerable attention can be paid to long-term strategic plans. Uh, knowledge management in the form of digital documentation of the technical condition of elements will be expanded in future. There will be also a more objective and accurate record of the damage, degradation models as well as a better training process and level of competence of bridge managers and inspectors will be improved. Here we have an example of such a system in which we have a virtual beam bridge model. We can place information about any damage found on it, even in multimedia form. And this is the end of today's lecture, uh, in which I presented the need to manage bridge resources, which constitute a substantial share in the national assets of each country. At the same time, bridges are very sensitive and challenging to maintain an element of transport infrastructure. Without them, the road or rail network will cease to function. Bridge disasters indicate to us that the need for regular inspection and development of bridge management systems. I am convinced that many of you who, who decide to go on an adventure with bridges in the future will definitely be involved in bridge infrastructure management and indeed already using the BEAM tech methodology. Thank you very much uh, for your attention and see you at the next lecture.